Hey there guys, it's your favorite backyard geographer again. Have you ever wondered how us earth scientists are able to categorize and identify soil based off of its texture? Well, you're in the right place. Today we're going to learn how to use a soil texture triangle. Well, to begin, the first thing that we need to know is that soil can be identified a lot of different ways. We can look at its color, at its pH level, but in this specific video we're going to learn how to look at its texture. So what we're looking at is the actual grain size of the material, the minerals, that are within that sample. I provided a graph here on the left just to kind of put in perspective that there's actual scientific measurements in which we identify samples. So we can see that clay material is a grain size less than 0.002 millimeters. Now, we can see that there's a list of clay, silt, very fine sand, all the way to very coarse sand. But not all the time do we have a little way to measure this, you know, whether we're using a micrometer or something like that. So we have to do it in the field. So let me show you how this would have been done in the field. So there's a couple steps. The first thing I have here to show, every earth scientist has one of these in their back pocket when we're out in the field. I love this because what it does, it actually gives us not just the name of the material, but gives us a little window in which we can feel the actual texture. What's interesting to point out is that very often people assume that sand describes a specific material. But the reality is, sand is a grain size. So it, sand can be made of quartz, feldspar, it can be made of seashells, it can be made of even basalt. At the end of the day, sand is categorized based off of its grain size. Now, that being said, how do we do this in the field? Well, we can take our little handy dandy book and that'll help us identify some pieces, but the real deal is to get some of that material in your hand and then add a little bit of water and then start rubbing your fingers throughout that material. Why? Well, based on this category here, we're going to be able to guesstimate, in a sense, the percentages. You know, all soil equivalates to 100%. So it has to be 100% of either what we identify as being a sand, a silt, or a clay. And that's really easy to do because sand, as we know, is going to be coarse. So it's going to be very aggressive on your hand, like sandpaper. And clay, on the other hand, is going to cake, kind of like a cookie, like dough. So we find that we're able to distinguish a percentage of each. So for the next slide, I'm going to share three samples that we have taken in our hands, rubbed around in our fingers with a little bit of water, and came up with our percentages. And then we're going to learn how do we plot these on the graph. So let's begin with sample one. So we can identify that this sample in particular has been called a 40% sand. 40% silt, and 20% clay. So this is the soil texture triangle. Now, they don't often have colors on it, but I felt the colors would be helpful for us to learn how to use it. So you can see that as an example, clay, the arrow goes this way, goes from down to up, and we can see it goes from 0 to 10, 20, 30, and the lines are going to get drawn in the same direction in which the numbers are lying. So I'm using my, as an example for clay, is green. Here's my green line down here, so it's going to stay horizontal. So if, I, if a sample perhaps is 60%, I would line it along that 60 line. And the same thing goes for silt and sand. So let's try this. So it says for sample one that our sample is 40% sand. So sand is blue. So I'm going to grab my blue line and I go 10, 20, 30, 40. So I grab my blue line and bring it all the way down here so it's along the line of 40%. The next percentage is silt at 40%. Well, silt is orange. Silt is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. So I can grab my orange line and drag it over here until it intersects with that 40 line. Now notice how now the blue and my orange line are intersecting on one spot. And that's pretty awesome. That's going to help us with our answer. Because you see our last percentage is clay, which is 20. 0, 10, 20. Clay is horizontal. I can bring my line up. And I can see that in this case here, that all three lines intersect on one point. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this sample one would be identified as a loam. So let me move my lines back. You know, normally when we're doing this in the field, we would just use a pencil and a piece of, on a little tablet like this, but I just felt the colors were kind of helpful. So let's try the next one, sample two. It says, well, 25% sand, 45% silt, and 30% clay. So I start with sand. Sand is 25%, sand is blue. So I can grab this, I go see 0, 0, 10, 20, 25 is between 20 and 30, so right about there. 
Silt is at 45%. So silt I can see is orange. So I'm going to be able to line that up. So it was 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. So 45 is between those two. And then the last one is clay at 30%. Well, clay goes 0, 10, 20, 30. So I can bring this up to right there, which lets me know that all three lines intersect on one point within this box that's right here. So therefore, that's called a clay loam. So a couple things to walk away with. All three lines, sand, silt, and clay, must intersect on one point. If it doesn't intersect, then you perhaps made an error with how you drew your lines. Another thing to remember is that you know the numbers themselves are drawn the same direction in which the numbers are oriented. So notice that the angle for 10 goes this way versus uh, for clay is horizontal. Also, they intersect within one of these greater boxes. So no matter where it is within this box, if they intersect in here, it's going to be called a clay. And why is this important? Well, because when we're writing reports, we're sending this out to perhaps the United States uh, Department of Agriculture, we're sending it to a report of someone in a different country. We can give them the percentages, but it's so much easier for us to understand just a specific name. So we can identify a particular soil name such as for Santa Clarita, we know that we have a lot of clay. So we're somewhere between a clay loam and a sandy clay. And we have a specific name that identifies our specific soil. And hey, did you know that every state has its own state soil? So be sure to look yours up. I'm gonna leave sample three alone. Be sure to answer your comment below uh, and let me know what you came up with as a name for sample three. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll talk soon.